Well, hello for you, and welcome to our last lesson in this particular unit. It's been a fairly short unit, only five um, video lessons, a couple of them rather lengthy. Uh, our topic today is making connections. Our goal, I can make real-world connections with the sinusoidal curves and determine the rate of change. Okay, so rate of change is determined, like, you can do it the same way that you have been doing it all the time, remember? Um, find the slope of the tangent by doing um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If you have uh, your x1 and your x2 really, really, really close together. Okay, so you can sub numbers in, get two x's, get two y's, find the slope of the tangent as long as your two x's are really, really close together. Same thing we've been doing all semester. Okay, uh, but we're going to try and make some connections with the instantaneous rate of change and we're going to use the graphing calculators. So I want you to remember that instantaneous rate of change is the slope of the tangent. That's what we did when we, when we picked two points that were really, really, really close together and um, found the slope. Uh, we were estimating the slope of the tangent by finding a secant of two points that were so, so close together on the curve that they may as well be the same point. Um, however, we're going to look at it a little bit different way because we're going to use some technology. So here's what we're going to do on the graphing calculator and I'm going to walk you through this, how we're going to do it. So uh, this is just written down so that you can try it on your own terms. Um, if you have the graphing calculator software on your computer, please use it. I have not found a way for Desmos to actually do this, so this is one of the times where I cannot get Desmos to do it. Um, but we're going to take a look at making tangent lines uh, to a curve with the graphing calculator. So I'm going to pull up the graphing calculator and the first thing I want you to see is that I've actually put in the sine function here. Um, the sine function starts at 0, at pi by 4 it's 0 0.707, at pi by 2 it's up to 1. So you remember this, we've been looking at it for a while. I'm just going to do a rough sketch here. Starts at 0, goes up to 1, down to 0, down to negative 1, up to 0 again. So here's our three zeros. Here's our maximum and our minimum value, and in between at the 45s here and here, and here and here, there's a whole lot of symmetry. Up here I've got positive 707, and then down here I've got negative 0.707. So, uh, we're going to graph that on the graphing calculator, so I'm going to pull this up, and I'm going to punch in y equals sine x, uh, sine x. Let's have a look at that. Now this is kind of hard to see. Let's actually zoom in on it a little bit. Here's how I'm going to zoom in on it. We know that one period of sine goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now your calculator, when you turn it on, is already in radians. If you go in mode, you can see that radians is highlighted. So when I go into window, I'm going to put for one period. I'm going to have uh, my x's go from negative or go from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to type in 0 here for my minimum and 2 pi for my maximum. And the scale I'll just leave at 1. My y minimum, I'm going to have it go from negative 2 to positive 2 because we know it goes between negative 1 and positive 1 and I just want a little bit outside that boundary. Uh, so now when I graph it, I can see it just a little bit more clearly. It's not hugging the axis quite so much. Now we want to put a tangent on here, so I'm going to start by putting a tangent on all of these things. So we want the instantaneous rate of change, the IROC, at the zero point right there. So here's how we're going to do it. On the graphing calculator, you can go into draw. See the word draw there? We have to press second and the program button. And we want to draw on a tangent. So we're going to choose five. And I want a tangent at zero. So I'm going to just key in zero. So we want a tangent to draw at x equals zero. When I press enter, there it's drawn on my tangent at x equals zero. And you see you get the little cursor flashing there, it's a little bit hard to see. But they've given you the equation of the line down here. x equals zero, y equals 0.999999839. X plus zero. So that is the equation of the tangent line. And we all know that the slope of the tangent, when, or the slope of any line, is the number that goes with the X. And this says 0 0.9999999, that's as close to one as we're going to possibly get. So at zero, 
the instantaneous rate of change is 1. Now I'm going to go and do the same thing. I'm going to go second, draw. I'm going to draw a tangent on at pi by 4. Uh, so I just have to key in pi by 4. So I go second and the uh, up arrow to get me pi divided by 4. So there's my pi by 4. I'm going to press enter. It's going to draw on that tangent line. We're going to get a little bit of a mess here quite shortly. Uh, but it tells me that at pi by 4, uh, my instantaneous rate of change is 0.707. And that's interesting. 0 0.707. Now let's do it at pi by 2. Uh, pi by 2 is right up here. Pi by 2 is the maximum. What do you think? You should, we shouldn't have to put this on. Draw the slope of the tangent over here. Uh, the tangent at the maximum value, the same as the tangent at the minimum value, is going to be horizontal. So the slope is going to be 0. Uh, let's put it on anyway, just for the sake of showing you that that's actually what it's going to be. So we're going to put on the tangent when x is pi by 2. Whoops. I need the by there, pi divided by 2. Enter. So draw on the tangent. What's it tell us? 0x plus 1. So the slope of the tangent there is 0. We're going to do a couple more, and then we're going to see if you can notice a pattern here. Uh, let's do 3 pi by 4. So we'll go um, second, draw, tangent, at 3 pi divided by 4. There we go. It's going to be negative this time, so it's not exactly the same as before, but it's negative 0 0.707. So negative 0 0.707. And if we finish filling these in, okay, this is what you get when you finish filling it in. Now, this looks very much like this. It's only slightly different. Let's see if we can do a rough sketch of the graph of this thing and see what we notice. Okay, We notice that, uh, and let's put on our major points here. We're going to have pi and 2 pi. And then of course this is pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2 if we split this into 4. Now our function starts this instantaneous rate of change, if we're going to graph the function of the instantaneous rate of change, um, it starts at 1 and at pi by 2 it's 0 and at um, pi it's negative 1. At 3 pi by 2 it's back up to 0 and at 2 pi it's back up to 1. So this thing, and there's going to be the at pi by 4 in here it's 0.7, so it's somewhere up in here. So it's not a straight line. This isn't a V by any means. It looks like it does this. So that actually looks like another, well, it's another sinusoidal curve because we've got all the same numbers as a sinusoidal. But if you recognize this, it's actually, this is actually cos. So the IROC of the normal sine curve and by normal I mean untransformed is the cos curve. It's cosine curve I should say. Now when you transform it you mess it up just a little bit um, but I will tell you that it it goes uh, kind of the other way too that the um, the instantaneous rate of change of cos uh, actually has something to do with sine. It's not sine directly, but it is pretty close. Um, so instantaneous rate of change is given this way. Now we're going to take a look at um, some real world applications that might be uh, modeled by a sinusoidal curve. So many real world applications follow a cyclical or sinusoidal pattern. We can use a sinusoidal curve to model them. Usually we will choose the sine curve and apply transformation to suit. Now if something happens to start at a maximum value you might want to choose a cos curve because if it starts at the maximum value you don't have to worry about any kind of phase shift. So let's have a look at this thing here first. Um, Example 1 says the number of employees at a city bicycle company for each of the last 11 years is shown as shown below. Find a sine curve that will model this data. Use technology to help you. So we are going to use the graphing calculator, but I'm also going to just sort of examine 
this um, this information. So we're going to have a look. The amplitude is half the distance from the max to the min. So what's the max and min? There they are. We've got a minimum of 209 and a maximum of 261. So half the distance from the min to the max. So we need to find the distance between the min and the max. So 261 minus 209 is 52. And so 52 is the distance from the min to the max. So if I'm graphing something, that's this distance from here to here. Now the amplitude is only half that. It's the distance from the midline to the top. So we have to cut that in half. So 52 divided by 2 is 26. So this is going to be our amplitude. Now the midline is the horizontal line right between the min and the max, this in here. To get the midline, we can take an average of the min and the max. So we can do, do 261 plus 209 divided by 2. And that just happens to be 235. <clears throat> now, we need to know what the period is for the k value. So what does this look like? Now, for this, we're going to need the graphing calculator. So I'm going to go into the graphing calculator and um, let's clear it. Oh, this is frozen. Hold on. So I'm going to go into the graphing calculator and I'm going to plug these things in. I'm going to plug the year in for the x values and I'm going to plug the employees in for the y values. And you've been doing this for a while, so hopefully you remember how. If not, quick recap. I'm going to press stat and 1 and this takes me into the list and then I'm going to enter all this information. Ta-da! There in record time. Um, and now we're going to graph this. Remember we have to turn our plot on, so we go second plot on, um, or second y equals. Uh, this tells us the plot is off, so I have to press enter and enter again to turn it on. Um, my x list is list 1 and my y list is list 2 exactly the way I wanted it. This is going to graph me a dot graph with um, little squares as my dots. Now the problem is when I press graph I'm not going to get anything and that's because I'm graphing 1 to 11 and then these huge numbers here. So I have to put something on here. Um, I have to go into the window settings to make sure that I can see all of these points. So I'm going to graph, I'm going to start it at negative 3 and go to positive 13 just so that I surround these kind of nicely. And for my y min, I'm going to put my y min at 200 because that's a little lower than the um, than my lowest value. So I'm going to put in 200. And for my max, I want to go a little bit higher than my highest value. So I'm going to go put in 270. Now when I graph it, they should be there. And it does look somewhat cyclical or somewhat sinusoidal. A um, little bit off in here. And I want to double check and make sure that I have all of those numbers incorrectly. So I'm going to press stat and enter again. And I'm going to go through 28, 41, 59, 233, 226, 2, um, 209, 212, 225, 240, 251, 261. They look like they're all good. So this is the information that I'm working with. Now I'm going to put on um, the midline on here. The midline we found to be 235. So I'm going to put on uh, y equals 235. Now that's just going to graph me a straight line across the middle. And so that looks pretty much in the middle for my sinusoidal. Uh, and since sine starts on 0, I want to know exactly how much forward this thing has shifted. <clears throat> for my, uh, or I need to know what my period is for my k value. So it looks like from this dot to this dot, we have our full pattern, right? This from maximum to maximum. So that dot there, the third one, 1, 2, 3, is from 259 to the other biggest value, 261, goes from 3 to 11. So my period length is in fact um, 11 minus 3, which is 8. Now, in order to find the k value, remember we have to know that the period equals 2 pi divided by k. So if I put 8 in here, and rearrange to solve for k, I'm going to have 8k equals 2 pi. And then if I divide both sides by 8, I get k equals 2 pi by 8, which is in fact pi by 4. 
So my k value is going to be pi by 4. And then the phase shift is the x value when the y is first on the midline. So let's have a look at this thing again. And when it's first on the midline, it looks somewhere in here, which this was 1, so it's somewhere between 1 and 2. So let's say about 1.3. Okay, 1.3. Uh, and that's just because we know that y, or that sine starts here. So if it shifted over this much, then this gives us our k value, uh, wherever it is first on the, and this isn't the axis, it's the midline. Um, so wherever k is first on the midline. And that is why we decided to put the midline on there. So let's kind of wrap this all together. Uh, I'm going to uh, give an equation. This is going to be y equals, the amplitude is 26, y equals 26, sine of our k value is pi by 4 and we need a 1.3 that's where it was first on the on the midline the x value where the y is first on the midline so I'm gonna go x and remember it was moved forward so minus 1.3 and then we have to add on the midline 235 so we got all those components there now I'm gonna go back to my graph I hope it hasn't frozen and put all of that on there so we're going to go y equals, and it hasn't frozen, thank goodness. I'm going to go down so that my midline stays on there. Uh, 26 sine of pi by 4. So pi divided by 4. Now I need brackets again. x minus 1.3. End bracket. Uh, and I need two end brackets here because I'm capping off the whole sign, and then I need to go plus 235 for my midline. Whoops. Uh, delete. Plus 235. Graph. Let's see how well we did. Oh, a little tiny bit off, but we're not too bad. Part of the problem was this thing in here doesn't really follow anything, and then I'm a little off there. Now we can actually get the graphing calculator to give us an equation for us, uh, because it will do a sinusoidal regression. Um, so if I go second uh, calculate, oh that's not what I wanted to do, sorry. I wanted to go stat and over to calculate. Um, I knew I needed calculate. I need to go down and it's going to give me a sine regression way down here, a sine regression. So I'm going to press enter and enter again. Do, 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 up, oh, there it is. Okay, now I can make it put this thing on here. Here it's filled in all our gaps, and, and this B value isn't exactly our K value, um, but this is, the A value is in fact the amplitude, and the D value is going to be our midline. So let's see how we did there. It thinks it's an amplitude of 22. We thought it was 26. Um, they gave us a midline of 230, and we've got a midline of 235. So we're kind of around the same spot. Let's put this one on. So I'm going to go Y equals, and I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to press VARS, and I'm going to go into statistics because it's the statistics that I've just had it do. We're going to go over to equation, and regression equation puts in the last regression equation that I calculated, uh, which I had it do a sinusoidal regression, so here we go. So put it all in there, put all of the little points and everything in it so we don't have to actually add or subtract any, or like round anything. Uh, and now when I press graph, and I'm going to take hours off, I'm not going to delete it, I'm just going to hide it. Here's how you hide it. You go to the equal sign and you press enter. And now the equal sign isn't highlighted, so it's not going to put ours on there. So now I'm going to graph it. And there's the midline that we put on there. And let's see how well they did with the... See, now they didn't get up to quite to the maximum that we did. So... You know, it's you can do it by hand or you can do it on the graphing calculator. Who knows which one you might want better? Uh, the graphing calculator has a set um, set way that it calculates regressions, and I'm just going to graph them both on the same so that we can see them. I just want to make this line be bigger. There, it's thicker. So go graph. There, there's the one that we thought it was. That dark one. And you can see we're a little bit off in here from where the graphing calculator was. We're pretty close down in here. But we thought our maximums were higher 
um, than what the graphing calculator took them as. Um, so there, that's how to do it by hand and how to do it with the graphing calculator. Uh, you got a few questions to work with. Some of them you may have to find the instantaneous rate of change of a sinusoidal by doing the rates of change um, that we did before using slope where you have to pick two x values really 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 close together find the y values and then find the slope between them. Um, I'm not going to do another example of that because we've done a lot of them so far this one is just using sine. Um, so that's it for this video and that's it for this particular unit.